spray method, which is where you spray the little teeth with some cooking spray. Because theoretically, it should keep the little ice balls from forming because you know how oil repels water. So I'm gonna try it out this time and see if it works. But I don't know, because I'm not an expert. So this is all trial and error. So here I am, I'm at Deadman's Hill Overlook in Michigan, and this weekend we're going to be doing the Jordan River Pathway. It is also called the Jordan Valley Pathway. Um, I don't really know which one is the correct term, I'm not sure what the consensus is, but it's a 18 and a half mile loop, and I'm doing it in two days, and I have to camp pretty much exactly at the halfway point at the Penny or Piney Branch campground. Uh, it's the only place you're allowed to camp. So it is going to be a wintry snowshoe trip. It's February right now and the lows are only gonna be around like maybe down to single digits, mostly in the teens, and then the highs around 30. So it should be a good trip. Let's get started. It's about 8.15 right now and whoop, I almost fell down. And let's get going because sometimes snowshoeing is slow moving and I wanna get to camp before dark. So let's see what we can find. So one thing that kind of slows you down in the winter time is how the trees just like get snow on them and get weighted down whereas normally this tree would not be in the middle of the trail and it's like that a lot especially since you don't really want to like get wet from the snow so it just does make for a very pretty trail though I will say but there's more obstacles So I've been about a mile, and this is the point where if you go that way, it'll loop around back to the parking area, and then if you make the left, then you continue on the Jordan River pathway. So I should have maybe about eight more miles to do today. We're still just getting started, and the sun is out. It's like not that cold when I'm moving, so it's been very nice so far. So this right here was what I was trying to prevent with the cooking spray. See how there's just like a little ball of ice there? Makes it very difficult when your foot's supposed to rest on it. It just like slides off when you're walking and it's not very effective anymore. And then this is like where the teeth are and these, they just get so like icy. They have like ice balls on them. And oh, well that one just popped off, so that was good. I did bring like um, a knife this trip 
So I'm just gonna kind of like chisel it off a little bit, I think. But if anybody knows like how to prevent that from happening, let me know. Cause clearly, well, I mean, I guess the cooking spray worked for a couple hours, so maybe I just need to reapply it. But I don't know, that's what's happening. So I made it here to another overlook. I didn't really realize there was going to be another one. I don't know if there's like a name to it. It's cute. Not much to see. I'm about 1.7 away from the campground right now. So, and it's uh, about 3 o'clock. So, make an okay time. Definitely will be there before dark. And now we are once again on the North Country Trail. I'm pretty sure the rest of the Jordan River pathway is concurrent with the NCT. So that's pretty cool. Considering we were on it in Ohio and when we did the Manistee River Trail. And I feel like one other one, but I don't remember very long trail, so 4,000 miles and something. I forgot that we were also going to hit the 45th parallel, which is halfway between the North Pole and the equator. Yeah, North Pole and the equator. It says it on a sign over here. Oh, it looks like maybe there's a trail log. We'll find out. Maybe. I can even open it. Yes. Guess I'm gonna sign the trail log. Very nice sunset. I don't think it looks as good on the camera. It's very like pink in person. So I'm almost to the campground. That's the Piney Bridge right there. And then the parking area is back there. That's where I came from. Uh, but I think I'm gonna stop since there's flowing water and I brought this like super heavy insulated water bottle which like I would never carry this usually because it's so heavy but it has a wide mouth and I thought I would have to boil snow so it would be easier to pour in there and it's insulated which my water did not freeze today so I brought iodine and I'm just gonna take from this creek I guess it's like a little branch of the Jordan River and then let the iodine sit in there and then it should be ready uh, for cooking by the time I set up camp. So this is not cool. You have to cross, but it's like, I think all of that is like ice. If my feet and like ankles go in, I have my dry pants for sleeping. I'm almost at camp. It'll be okay if I accidentally go in, as long as I don't go all the way in. So here we go made it to the campground and my feet and ankles did get wet back there so I'm gonna have to move quickly to set up camp and then change out of those uh, pants and socks ASAP but the campground is first come first serve it's $15 a night so I need to go figure out where I can uh, leave my $15 but I'm gonna set up my tent really quick Cooking up some water because the creek was too muddy, so we're just gonna melt snow. Just setting in my tent right now. Now we're cooking up some dinner. 
the Noor meal. I think I put in too much snow, <laughs> but hopefully it'll thicken up. But it'll be hot, so that's really all that matters. I'll show you when it's done. Definitely put too much water in this. I don't know if you can see that. Still tastes pretty good. I'll just drink all the juice afterwards. So it is the morning now, <clears throat> and my pants are frozen. These are my leggings, and they are just frozen. So are my wool underpants. They're a little bit less frozen, but I don't even really know if you can tell. But they really shouldn't be able to uh, hold their shape like that. So that'll be fun putting those on. It's a little after 7 because my alarm didn't go off for some reason. So I'm going to change my pants, break down the tent, pack up the pack, and then we're going to hit the trail. We've got like 8 and some miles left, 8 or 8.5 to hike out. And I told Natalie I probably wouldn't make it out any sooner than 1. And it might be later than that. Who knows what the trail is like. So let's get move on and get the day started. And these are my socks from yesterday, by the way. I'm not putting these back on because I brought other socks. But <laughs> yeah, they froze them. I'm sure my boots are... Oh, okay. Yeah, it's going to be fun trying to put these on. Pro tip. If you're winter backpacking, make sure that you... <clears throat> untie all the laces and open your boots as wide as possible because they're really hard to get on in the morning when they're frozen so that'll be a fun little challenge Finally made it down to the Jordan River. It's really pretty. It's sunny out. This is really peaceful, honestly. The Jordan River pathway has been really pretty so far, and I am pleasantly surprised. I went into this with low expectations, but Loki, I might come back here like in the summer. I think it'd be worth it. Then it'd be a little bit more of a relaxing trip, but. It's been really nice and pretty well maintained for it being winter. I mean, there have been down trees and stuff, but it's been marked and, you know, they obviously take pretty good care of it, so very nice. So I guess we have to walk across a beaver dam. <laughs> I don't want to. Oh, man. This is a really cute pond though. It almost looks like we're in the mountains. Okay, let's navigate across this nonsense. Made it across and it wasn't quite as bad as I thought it would be. This is a really cute spot. So we're within about a mile of the parking area. I think I'm like maybe 0.8 away and I just wanted to do a little reflection on the trip and the trail while I'm walking back. I don't think I would do another snowshoe trip with this many miles. Um, it's just very taxing, especially on the parts of the trail where no one else had walked on, where I was just breaking the trail. It's very strenuous. I see why people go in groups or pairs and like to switch off who's in the lead because it's just very, very taxing. The parts like this, like where it's like 
lots of people have been walking. I'm making great time on. Um, but on this particular trail, it wasn't all that well traveled in all areas. And I also didn't film quite as much on this trip just because it's so hard just to do all the extra steps. Um, I didn't want to spend the time doing it, and especially today because I'm trying to get back to the parking lot to meet Natalie. And I don't want to keep her waiting because she's already been waiting there for a while. Also, when you're snowshoeing and it is so arduous, you're really just like hiking all day. And part of the fun of winter camping for me is making a fire and spending more time around camp. So most of the time, like in the summer, I like to do big days, big miles, but not really as much in the winter. I like to do more of the camping part. And I was literally just hiking the whole day yesterday and a good chunk of today already. But really that's what I came out here for, just to test my limits, get more winter experience. It really, I haven't felt cold like the entire trip. I don't know how cold it got. I'll have to check the temperatures when I get back, but I think the white gas stove might have even been overkill. Although it is more efficient for boiling snow. But overall, very nice trail. Uh, pleasantly surprised. It was pretty well marked. Um, some beautiful, like, landscape. The river was pretty. So yeah, I've been impressed so far. But anyway, that's all for now. I'll check in when we get back to the car. Made it back to the car. All right, back in the car. We're on the way back home. We have a three and a half hour drive. I'd say that was a successful trip. Natalie had a little adventure. She got to rescue this lady stuck in the snow. Yeah, yeah, on my way out from dropping off our dear acorn. There was a car stuck right there. Right there? Right there. But you, being a true Michigander, knew what to do. This is why I let you drive. <laughs> <laughs> yep, me and all my expertise. <laughs> Luckily, we packed a shovel. <laughs> How long were you with her? Over an hour, for sure. Wow, what a good Samaritan. She really did do great driving in all the snow on the way here. I was very proud and impressed and thankful because... I probably would have gotten stuck if I came here by myself. Let's be honest. Nah, you would have made it. I'm glad that you have confidence. Because I don't. <laughs> but anyway, apparently there's a Five Guys that's... How many minutes away? 16. Oh, 16 minutes away. So, I'm going to get a cheeseburger. Natalie's going to get a bunless burger. And then we're going to go home. And that's all. Thanks for watching. I am not sure what the next trip will be, but now I've done two thirds of the Triple Crown in the Michigan Lower Peninsula, so I'm probably gonna knock out the Five Lake Loop. I don't know, maybe just on a random weekend, who knows. And then, yeah, I don't know what my next hike is gonna be. Probably, maybe not until the spring or like later winter. So, probably outside of Michigan. Maybe I'll go back to the south, I don't know. But stay tuned, because it'll probably be fun, whatever it is. Bye. Bye.